Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to talk about VPN in Mountain Lion Server. Now VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And basically what a VPN does is it allows you to log into your computer when you're outside your network and have it function as if your computer is sitting on your local network. So you get a local IP address, uh, it'll appear that your computer is on the network and you'll have access to all of your services through a very secure uh, tunneling protocol. So basically what you're doing is, tunnel, is creating a tunnel on the internet into your server uh, which is back at home and it allows for se secure connections. Now when I say secure connections what that basically means is that if someone wanted to listen in on your line or your connection to your server at home and try to pick up the data that you're transferring back and forth they would be unable to do it because of the way that the security is set up with a VPN and the way that that link is made. So VPN is really a, a great service to have uh, especially for those that you, of you that set up a dot .private uh, or a dot .com network uh, because you're able to log back in. If you set up a dot local network you won't be able to use this service it's only available on the other two so what I thought I'd show you today is how to set this up uh, what some of the key terms mean and then I want to show you how you can connect uh, your computer to your virtual private network to your VPN so you can see here uh, I've got VPN active in the sidebar here I've got the green light mine's already running the big on switch is flicked and you'll notice these various settings here. Uh, now, now the first set of settings is configuring VPN4 and you'll notice I have the option of L2TP or L2TP and PPTP, right? So a lot of P's in there, don't know what that, you don't know what that means. Let me just explain that for a second. The L2TP means Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol and that's the more up-to-date uh, security measure protocol that gets you into your server. All right, So that's the more current one that happens. Uh, PPTP is an older uh, protocol and that is point-to-point -point tunneling protocol. And so that's the, that is the older uh, method of connecting. And so sometimes you might have some legacy devices that will need that. So for the purposes of our screencast, I've got both set up so you can see how it works when both are live and active. For most of you, the just L2TP will be plenty. That's the more secure one anyway, and that's really the only one you might need to worry about. Now right under that we've got VPN host name and this is where you will put your server name and you want that information to fall into this area here and as you can see it says clients configured using profiles will ac access your VPN service using this host name and IP and or IP address and so if you just put the host name in there and you've got your DNS set up okay uh, that's all you're gonna have to enter to uh, tell your clients on the outside how to get into your VPN service now you'll see here that you've got a shared secret. Now a shared secret is an extra layer of security uh, that VPN adds uh, onto your connection so that it's not just by your username and password that you can VPN into the server. You also have to have the shared secret match on your server and on the client that's going to connect and I'm going to show you where that set is set up. Now you'll have a default one that will show up there usually in Mountain Lion Server. What you want to do is make sure you change that because the default one won't work if you try to use it number one number two it's not secure if you use that one so you're gonna to want to create any kind of shared secret in here that you want to put now the nice thing about this is you don't have to remember it so you can make it as complex as you want you just have to make sure it matches on your client and if you forget what it is you can click this little button here to show the shared secret and it'll put it out in English so that you know uh, exactly what letters and numbers and things that you used were there so it's you want to make that as secure as you can uh, you don't have to worry about remembering it because of that. Now you'll notice we also have client addresses right here. And you see that we've got 16 for L2TP and 15 for PPTP and an edit button here. Let me just click the edit button so I can show you how this is set up. So now if you look at this screen you'll notice I've assigned 31 addresses. Now I can go up and down and choose however many I want. Uh, 31 is well outside the range of what I need. That's kind of one of the default things so I just left it there. Uh, but I've got that right there. Now you'll notice here I've got a starting at zone and you'll notice I'm starting at 10.0.1 you know 224. Okay now I, you want to place this number, your starting number, outside the range of IP addresses that you might have uh, set up already on your router. Uh, so it, for instance, um, if we take a look at your router, and let me, hang on one second, let me pull up um, my uh, router here so that you can see exactly what range I set and why I set this number. 
Okay, so here we are. I've got the airport utility opened up so I can show you what this looks like. Now, you'll notice on the network tab here, I've got my DHCP range. And this is the range of addresses that I'm going to give out to people as they connect to my network. And so you can see I've got point twenty two point one ninety one. Now, when you're setting this starting range on your client addresses, you want to make sure that this end number here is well beyond this 191 or whatever number you have there. Because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want your VPN to try to assign an address to your client that has already been assigned on your network by your router. And you, then you'll have a conflict and then you won't be able to connect and you won't know why. And it'll cause all kinds of confusion with your router. And so what you want to do is set it within this client range. Now, you'll notice for me, I've got this set up here at 20 instead of starting with 1. And that's because I've got different addresses that I did reservations for, which I talked about uh, in a previous screencast. And so that's why my range is from that to that. But I wanted to show you what that looks like so that you could see uh, the different things that you had to have involved in making that work. So let me pop this down here for a minute. Now, once you've got that set, you can see it says sharing between, and you've got a range here, and you've just got a slider. You can slide it back and forth to say how many you want in the L2TP zone and how many you want in the PPTP zone. And so you just slide that, and then it'll set it up for you. Okay, so now that that's all set up, we can just put that down. I'm just going to click cancel. Uh, you'll notice also we've got DNS settings over here. It says one name server and no domain. So let me click edit and show you what that looks like. Now here, what you want to do is provide the name uh, of the servers that your uh, clients are going to connect to. And really the name is your IP address. Okay, what are the name servers? Now if I bring up uh, the net airport utility again, uh, my name server is my server here, which is at this address. And so I'm going to use that address up there. This is the address, whatever you reserve for your server, that you want to put in here so that your clients on the outside always know that I'm going to collect, connect to this particular name server. Now, let me pop this down. If you had more than one name server, you'd put it in here. But for home users, we're only looking at one server. So that's the address you want to put there. You can also provide these search domains to connect to clients. And, you know, if you had joe.com, you could put joe.com in there if you want to, or any search domains that you want the clients, that once they're in, uh, to connect to in terms of domains. Uh, again, for home users, we're fine with this. I don't have anything I need to connect to it. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. And we'll click cancel right here. All right, so now that we've got that with the DNS settings and the client addresses, let's talk about routes for a minute. Now, routes, let me just click edit here. Route is if you have more than one server. So this is usually a more complex uh, configuration for someone who's doing something for a, for a uh, business or something like that. And so on here, what you would do is you would add the IP address. Let me just click this plus button here. You'd add the IP address and the subnet mask for whatever other server you had on your network, if you had multiple servers, that you wanted your VPN clients to connect to or you wanted to route them through once they got into your network. And so then you would put whether it's a private or a public network type, and you would enter that information in there. Now again, since you're, we're home users, we're looking at really just one server, we really don't need to necessarily route things around. Uh, there's nothing you need to really set up here. You can just click cancel and leave that, that alone. Now, the final thing here is that you've got a save configuration profile. And let me click that for a minute to show you what this does. What it does is it creates a mobile config file, right? VPN.mobileconfig. You can change it to whatever name you want. But you'll notice I picked the VPN type. It can be L2TP or PPTP, depending on what, what I want this particular client to connect on, whichever one it needs. Again, if it's a legacy one, it might be this one. If it's a newer one, it'll be this one. And then I'm able to create this configuration file that I then can email to my clients that they can take then double click on the configuration and it will automatically set up uh, you, that, that client to be able to access your VPN. It'll fill in all the right fields. So it really is a nice way to set it up. You have this and then you also have profile manager that you can use, which I'll show you how to use later. But it's a nice way to, to get it set up if you want to do it that way. For our purposes, I'm going to do it manually so I can show you what fields need to be filled in and how they're filled in. Uh, but this is an option if you wanted to do it that way. So let me click cancel. All right, now that we've got everything set, what we do is throw the switch, put it on, wait for it to get set up. You'll see the green light, and now your VPN service is ready to go. And as I've shown you before, if I come over to Profile Manager, VPN will show up right here when it's running, which means that in the general configuration file for everything, though that service is also going to be included if I add it to any mobile devices. All right, so that's a great thing to know. One final thing to, to look at, because you're not going to get into your network if you don't open the right port, and that is to come up here to Office. Uh, again, for me, it's my Office router. It's my Airport Extreme. 
when you set up the service, it's automatically going to open the right ports uh, for you, so you don't have to worry about anything. That's the nice thing about having that Airport Extreme. But if you've got a different router and you have to open the ports manually, uh, I'm going to put the ports on the screen for you so that you know which ports go to L2TP and which ones go to PPTP, so that you can then go into your router's configuration software and open those ports yourself so that you do have access from the outside world into your network through VPN. All right, so you just open those ports and you're ready to go. Let me come back here. So now we have everything set up. We're ready to go with our VPN. And so now what I want to show you is how to set up a client to connect to your VPN network. So we're going to go take a look at, uh, at an outside client that I've got and how it works in setting it up. Okay, here we are over on the client machine where I want to set the VPN up. And so in order to get that set, you want to go into System Preferences and you want to click Network. And that's going to bring up your network tab where you have all of your network services like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and all of that. And so what you want to do to add your VPN, you just want to click this little plus button right here. And that'll bring down a pull-down menu that allows you to set up your various services. And you can see we could set up Wi-Fi, FireWire, those kinds of things. But down here you'll notice we've got VPN. So you want to click that so that the VPN gets set up. Then you want to choose the type of VPN that you want to set up. And as we talked about earlier, you have L2TP or PPTP. And so we'll just leave it at the L2TP because we want the, uh, the highest uh, secure uh, VPN that we've got. And then you can name your service to whatever you want and it'll show up over here on the sidebar. And then you just click Create. And so then what it's going to do is it's actually going to create this service and drop it into the sidebar on the side. So it's creating it right now. You can see it showed up over here. And now we need to configure it. Now that it's just sort of set over here, we've got to actually uh, configure it. So you've got different configurations. You can do a default or add configuration. And that's basically if you were going to add a configuration file that you already had, you would do add configuration. It would make it work. We're just going to leave that alone at default. In here, you want to put in your server address. Okay, so whatever your server, your fully, fully qualified domain name is, that's what you want to put in here. So I'll put mine in here. And then you want to put your account name, which is basically the usually the short name uh, that you have for whoever the user is right here that's going to be using VPN. So you want to put their name in here. And then you want to come down here to authentication settings. So you just click this right here. And in here, you're going to put in your password for the user. All right, that is you're setting the VPN up for. So it's their personal password is what you're going to put in here. All right. And then down here under shared secret, you're going to put whatever your shared secret is. Okay, whatever the one was that you put in uh, on here when you got it started. Okay, so you put your shared secret in there and type it in, click OK. And so now your service is configured and should be ready to go. Now, you can see here if I click Advanced, it'll bring up an advanced window that allows me to do some, uh, some other things with it. You know, I can send all traffic over the VPN connection. I can set it up that way. I can actually set up the uh, TCP uh, IP stuff if I wanted to. These are more advanced things that you don't really have to worry about, DNS servers, proxies. Just wanted to show you that that stuff was there, but we really don't need to set any of that up to get this working. Then one of the little things you want to do is you want to see this little check mark here that says show VPN status in the menu bar. When you check that, you get this little uh, menu bar item right here that allows you to quickly uh, sign on or off VPN. So I would recommend that you check that so that you have easy access to it right up here so you can get ready. When you're done, you just click apply and it puts everything over here in the sidebar. Now I've already set it up. I just wanted to show you how to set it up. So I'm going to actually get rid of this configuration because I don't need it. And, uh, and I'm going to um, close this down. And it's probably going to ask me if I want to apply. I don't want to apply. I'm just going to leave it alone and close this down. Now, if I want to sign on to VPN, now that I've got this little menu bar item, I just come right up here and I choose what I want to connect to. So I say, well, I want to connect to VPN, right? So I'm just going to connect to either one of those. I'll just connect to it on here. And it'll go out and it'll start the connection process. And as soon as you're connected, you'll notice it starts to show you how much time you've been connected to your VPN. And that's how it works. That's how you get set up. That's how you get connected to VPN. Now I know I'm on VPN. I'm on a secure connection now. And everything that I'm sending across that line is encrypted back into the server. And so I've got uh, everything that I need to make sure I've got that secure uh, connection. And it views me as if I'm on my uh, local network uh, in terms of local IP and that kind of stuff. All right. And if you just want to sign out, you simply come up here and you say disconnect whichever connection you've got. It disconnects you and puts you right back where you were. 
So that's all I have for this week on uh, VPN. Hopefully that helps you get started in uh, setting up your own VPN. I know sometimes VPN can be tricky, so you may have to try some troubleshooting things. Uh, but once you get it set up, it is pretty solid. You can set this up for your iOS devices as well as your Macs and works really well uh, to protect you when you're on other networks that you don't want anybody to see what, uh, see what you're sending back and forth on those networks. So it really does give some good uh, security and protection. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.